Are you trying to become a robotic software engineer? Whether your background is in mechanical engineering, software engineering, STEM major, or a non-STEM major, no matter what background, it is possible. The problem with most robotic software engineering roadmaps out there is that they start off like this. They say, learn linear algebra and statistics, go into C++ and Python, learn Arduino and Raspberry Pi, go into data structures and algorithms, learn robot kinematics, study computer vision, go into AI and machine learning, and then do some Git and CI CD. The thing is, this just doesn't work for most people. The problem is, you forget what you just learned when you have nothing to apply it to. You need to face the problem before you can learn and absorb the subject. That's why I came up with a seven-step process that will take you from a beginner to an advanced robotic software engineer. I will walk you step by step along this journey, sharing all of my experiences that I've learned throughout my decade of doing robotics. If you're new to my channel, I have a website at kevinwoodrobotics.com where I have a bunch of resources on robotics and computer vision. So check it out and subscribe to learn more. So what is robotics? What makes robotics so hard is that there's so many disciplines involved. So I'll be going over each one so you get a better idea of what it is. Specifically, I'll be diving into the software aspects of robotics. So the first one is how to move. So that's usually described by what's called kinematics. So you can see here, in order for this robot dog to move its legs, we actually need to implement kinematics to tell where each leg has to go. We also want to know how to go from point A to point B. This is a study of navigation. So here you can see my Tesla bot trying to navigate the world on the Cybertruck. Next, we want to know how to create a map while moving. This is a study of SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. Here you can see my Cybertruck driving around to create a map of its environment. Now, how about how to see? This is a study of computer vision. What you see here is a depth map. This is what the robot sees to figure out how far something is. Another question we may ask is how to choose the right path. This is a study of motion planning. This example here that you see is a Tesla bot doing some air curls. And we also have the question how to move something precisely. This is a study of controls. Here you can see we're implementing a controller to allow us to rotate the wheels of the Cybertruck. Last thing we ask is how to think. This is what AI and machine learning helps us with. Now that you have a pretty good overview of the different disciplines in robotics, we're ready to dive into the seven steps. The first step is learn programming. You should spend about four to eight weeks here. The main question we want to ask is, how do I tell my robot what to do? Let's say you have a robot. In order to communicate it, you need to give it code. So if you're just starting off, Python would be the best option. It's free, it has a strong community support, it has easy syntax, and has a lot of existing tools and packages that's related to robotics for you to use. I have a course on Python on my channel, so go ahead and check it out. Now that you have a programming background, the next step is start a robot project. You should spend about eight weeks here. What's great about doing projects is you get exposure to many areas and you get to apply what you learn. The question you can start asking now is, how do I make my robot do a specific task? Let's say you want your robot to do pick and place. Then you should ask, what are the steps to make a robot pick up an object? At first, you might not know what each step should be. So now you might start to ask how to figure out the steps. So you have robotics papers like Archive and IEEE, you have YouTube, you have courses, you have research labs, and you have mentors. If you need some personal help, I offer consulting. You could go ahead and book a session with me. Link will be in the comments. And I also have some courses where you can learn all about robotics and AI. So go ahead and check it out too. I will have robot projects coming pretty soon. So this will have robot projects from start to finish. It's going to have video tutorials, show you how to do robot in simulation, and then robot in real life. Make sure to sign up in the comments below. These robot projects will guide you through what each step is. Let's say we were able to figure out the steps. So first we calibrate our cameras, and then we find the object location and orientation. We determine the robot path. We move each robot joint. And then finally, we open and close the gripper. For each step ask, how do you use it, and why do you need it? So let's take camera calibration as an example. So if we look at the input, what we want to know is we have to pass in images. If we look at the output, what we get is, for example, a camera location. In the beginning, you can use something without understanding how it works. This is why I recommend using ROS for your projects. So ROS stands for Robot Operating System. It's not actually an operating system, but just a framework for robotics. 
So what's nice about ROS is that it integrates all of these concepts that we talk about and makes it really easy to use. Not only that, but when you create your robot in simulation like Gazebo or Arvis, you could directly transfer it to your real hardware with very little changes. I have a full course on ROS, so go ahead and check it out. Now for the hardware you might want to use, I highly recommend the Raspberry Pi. The reasons for that is you have exposure to Linux operating system, which is easy for robot development, it's good for camera integration, and also it works with ROS. When you dive into robotic projects, many times you're going to be using code from GitHub, so it's really good to start learning Git. So it's very useful to use open source code. You can manage and version control your code. And lastly, you could work on the same code with other people. I also have a course on Git, so go ahead and check that out as well. When you start learning things like ROS, Raspberry Pi, and Git, I want you to learn with a focused approach. Just focus on the parts that you need to complete your project. With a basic foundation in robotics, you should be ready for more advanced topics. The third step is to specialize. You should spend about eight weeks here. By specializing, you're able to pinpoint on one of these blocks and really understand how to approach it in different ways. So let's say you're interested in this part, the find object location and orientation. So by having a specialization, you might be able to come up with like different methods. So for example, you might have a method one, method two, and method three. You start developing the flexibility in different approaches. So you have all of these specializations you can choose from, but many times these specializations are somehow tied together. So you have controls with kinematics, you have kinematics with navigation, you have navigation with SLAM, you have SLAM with computer vision, you have computer vision with motion planning, and you have motion planning with controls. And you have AI and machine learning that pretty much touches on all of these topics. So there's two areas of math that's important for robotics. You have linear algebra and you have statistics. So depending on which field you're in, you may use one more than the other. So for things like controls, kinematics, and computer vision, it's going to be mostly linear algebra. Navigation is going to be mostly linear algebra, some statistics. Motion planning, a little bit of both. AI, a little bit of both. And you have SLAM, which is going to be mostly statistics. The thing is, you could specialize without fully mastering all the math. What I recommend is you first get a gist of the robotics concepts, and see where the math shows up, then develop a high-level understanding of the math concepts and dive into the details later. I have a bunch of resources that go into computer vision using OpenCV and computer vision using AI and machine learning, so go ahead and check it out. I have a lot more resources coming up, so make sure to subscribe. The next step is to recreate or develop a new algorithm. Spend about eight weeks here. So back to this example, now we're adding a twist. Let's say there's an object that we want to avoid. So the part that we need to modify now is the part that says move each robot joint. So our previous requirement was only move each robot joint, but now we make it a little bit harder. We're going to say move each robot joint while avoiding obstacles. So what's different now is that before, maybe we were using some pre-written code that was on GitHub, but now maybe we have to write our own code because it has to do something very specific. So before we were just asking how to use it, but now we're going to be asking how to create it. So this is where you dive into the math to understand the inner workings of the algorithms. So notice what we did here. We took an easy requirement and then make it a harder requirement. Coming up with these requirements can be challenging. So that's why I recommend making robots function in various situations so that you can come up with these requirements on your own. So up to this point, you should have a deeper understanding of a few areas in robotics. So continue building robot projects and making them more advanced. Step five, improve performance. Spend about eight weeks here. So let's say we're focusing in on this part, the find object location and orientation. So let's say that now we want to do it in under 300 milliseconds. So the things you might start to ask are things like, how can I store and search my data efficiently? How can I have my code run faster? How can I accelerate with hardware? So all of these things can be answered with the following. You can have data structures and algorithms, you have C++, and you have CUDA, which is a programming language. So with data structures, there's a bunch of different options. You have queues, you have linked lists, you have stacks, you have trees. With algorithms, you have things like breadth-first search, you have depth-first search, and you have different sorting algorithms. So the idea is choosing the most suitable data structure and algorithm will affect how efficiently your code runs. So at some point when performance is important, we may want to convert our Python code to C++ code. So the way Python works is you have human readable code, and then line by line, we're going to convert that to machine code, which is ones and zeros, and then run it line by line. 
But with C++, what's different is that instead we have human readable code. It's going to convert all the machine code to ones and zeros and then run the program. So instead of doing it line by line, it does it all at once, which is how C++ is more efficient. And the other option you have, especially for computer vision tasks, is to use CUDA. And what this lets you do is it lets you run a lot of different things in parallel. So depending on how fast you need to run your code, you may not necessarily need to use C++ or CUDA. It just all depends on your application. If you want to learn more C++, go ahead and check out this playlist and this one for data structures. The next step is software architecture. Spend about four weeks here. So let's say you had a program that did the move each robot joint. And then just because you made a little change to avoid obstacles, you made a complete copy of your entire program. If you're doing some quick testing, that might be OK. But imagine if you're using this code and you're sharing it with other people, that might not be the best practice. You'll end up having a lot of copies of the same code laying around. So instead of making copies, how can you organize your code to adapt to your changes? This is where software architecture comes in. This is where you start asking questions like how to support more tasks, how to facilitate collaboration with other people, how to keep code functioning, how to make changes. So this is exactly what software architecture helps with. Scalability, collaboration, maintainability, and adaptability. And the final step, we're ready to look at deployment. Spend about four weeks here. So let's say you made some changes to the determined robot path. What might end up happening is that you find out that your find object location breaks, and then your move each robot joint breaks. This is where CI-CD comes in. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. So with CI-CD, it makes sure its new code doesn't break the old code, it supports automatic testing, and it also guarantees code is always ready for use. So how it typically works is you might have code, and it's going to be living inside GitLab. Inside of GitLab, you're going to have some Jenkins that tells it to test the code on another computer. And then after that, it's going to pass back some results. And then that goes all the way back to GitLab, where the user can see the results. Now you should have a solid grasp of robotics and software. If at this point, you're still not quite sure what to do and want a personalized robotics roadmap, go ahead and book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Link will be down below. And if you want more resources on robotics and AI, go ahead and check out my courses. Link will be down below. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.